Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to go over a teaching series, specifically the cranial nerves. In this video I'm going to cover the location of the nerves, their function, and give you two mnemonics to help you remember the order of the cranial nerves and if they're sensing, if they're motor, or if they're both. And then afterwards, be sure to go to my website, registernursrn.com. There should be a link that pops up and take the quiz to test your knowledge on this material. Because if you're in anatomy or another health related class that requires you to know these cranial nerves, that quiz will help you prepare for your exam. So let's get started over all the 12 cranial nerves and where they're located at in the brain and their function. Cranial nerve number one is called the olfactory nerve and it is this pink area right here at the top and it is responsible for smell. How you can remember this, think of a stinky factory that maybe you live around one and it just stinks outside and just remember from the word factory, it's responsible for smell. Then cranial nerve number two is called the optic nerve and it is this green area right here and this area is responsible for sight. Optic is another word for your eyes, and so remember optic eyes, and that's responsible for sight. Then cranial nerve number three is called the ocular motor, and this is this little pink area right here, right below the optic nerve area, and it is responsible for moving your eyelids, your eyeballs, and adjust the pupils and the lenses of your eye. Now let's move down to cranial nerve number four. This is called the trochlear nerve, and it is this little purple area right here on these two sides. And this area is responsible for moving your eyeballs. Then over here, cranial nerve number five is called the trigeminal nerve, and this is the largest nerve out of all these cranial nerves. And it is responsible for moving your facial muscles, so it allows you to chew and, for and to form facial expressions. Cranial nerve number six is the abducens, and it is this little pink area right in here. And it is also responsible for moving your eyeballs, just like the trochlear. Cranial nerve number seven is the facial nerve. And notice in this area right here, you have a lot of nerves that run in together. A good way to remember that is how they're stacked together. It's gonna to be like seven, cranial nerve eight, cranial nerve nine, 10. So whenever you're trying to fill this out in a diagram, remember that these nerves are going in chronological order. So your facial nerve, produces tears, it produces your, it allows you to taste, uh, saliva production, and helps you form facial expressions. Then cranial ner nerve number eight is called the vestibular cochlear, and it is located up here in this area, it's the little brown sections, and this is responsible for auditory, which is hearing. Remember cochlear, a lot of people get cochlear implants so they can hear better, so that's how you can remember the function of this one. Cranial nerve number nine is called the glossopharyngeal, and it is this little green area located below the vestibular cochlear. And it's responsible for swallowing and for saliva production and taste as well. Now let's go down to cranial nerve number 10. This is our vagus nerve. And it is this pink area right here. And it is responsible, it controls your peripheral nervous system, which is the smooth muscle of the GI tract, which allows you to contract food and it relaxes. So that controls that area. Then we have accessory muscle, I mean, cranial nerve number 11. It's called the accessory and it is this area located right here in the orangish brown area. And it is responsible for moving your head and your shoulders and allows for swallowing. Then we have cranial nerve number 12, which is the last one. It's called the hypoglossal. And this is responsible for moving your tongue and allows you to formulate speech and swallowing. And this area right here is this little purple area right here that sits on top of the stem. So that is your tongue. Remember, tongue, um, the pre medical terminology term for that is glossial. So anything, er, anytime you see that glossial, that means tongue. So it allows, again, for the speech 
and for swallowing. And remember with glossopharyngeal, that also allowed for swallowing taste and um, uh, saliva production, and that has to do with the tongue. So try to remember those that way. Now let's go over the mnemonic to help you remember the order of these, and then another mnemonic to help you remember if it's sensing, motor, or both. Okay, this first mnemonic we're gonna go over is gonna allow you to remember the order of the cranial nerve. So get down a piece of paper and write it down so you'll remember it. I actually, me and my husband actually collaborated together and made this mnemonic up ourselves. There's a lot of other mnemonics you can use on the internet. I like to use something that makes sense to me and there were some things on there about Olympus and Germany and everything like that and it just didn't make sense to me. So we developed this one. Maybe it'll make sense for you. So this is how this one's set up. How it works, it's like an acrostic and the first two letters of some of these words are going to match up to the cranial nerves up here. And let me show you how it works. Okay, the acrostic says, old operators occasionally troubleshoot tricky abducted family veterans galloping valiantly across history. So how you remember this phrase and how you can remember the order of the nerves is look at old, old, O-L-D. The first two letters of old match olfactory, which is spelled O-L. So you know the first nerve is olfactory. Next, operators. OP, same as optic, which is cranial nerve two. OP and optic. Remember that. So you, we got olfactory and optic. Then we have occasionally. OC matches with cranial nerve number two, three, which is ocular motor. Troubleshoot. TRO matches with trochlear, which is TRO. Because it gets really confusing through those other mnemonics because I think one was like O, 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 and it's like, well, O, 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 but which O's are they? And I think this mnemonic just helps you a little bit better because it tells you the first two letters of what those specific cranial nerves will be. So let's keep going. Tricky, the TRI goes for trigeminal. Then you have abducted, which goes for cranial nerve number six, which is abducens, abducted abducens, you remember that. And then family for facial, veterans for vestibulocochlear, and then galloping, we just put that one for G because it's the only G1, so you should know that it's glossopharyngeal. Valently is for vagus, which VA, across for accessory, the AC, and then history for your last one, which is hypoglossal. So I think that mnemonic will help you remember the order of it. I like how the first two letters help me remember all those O cranial nerves. Now let's go over the second acrostic to help you remember if these are sensory or motor or both on these cranial nerves. Okay, for our next acrostic, it says, some say marry money, but my brother says, Big brains matter more. So the key with this is that you want to look at the first letter of these words. The S's mean sensory, the M's mean motor, and the B's mean both. So let's go over it. Sum, this is referring to cranial nerve number one, and it is a sensing nerve. Say, the S is referring to sensing for cranial nerve number two. It's a sensing nerve as well. Mary. M for motor, cranial nerve number three is a motor nerve. Money, M is a motor nerve and it's cranial nerve number four. But is for both and that's for cranial nerve number five. It's both a sensing and a motor. Mary for cranial nerve number six and it is for, um, it's a motor as well. And then you have brother and it's cranial nerve number seven and it's for both. Then you have says S, that is for cranial nerve number eight and it's sensing. Um, cranial nerve number nine, the word big B, it's both. Cranial nerve number 10 B, it is both, it's both sensing and motor. Cranial nerve number 11 is an M, so it's a motor nerve. And cranial nerve number 12, the last one, is a motor nerve as well. So I thought that this was a great mnemonic that um, someone had developed to help you remember those because those are really asked on tests 
um, it'll, for instance, say, is the optic nerve a sensing motor or both, or a true or false or something like that. So that is just a great acrostic to help you remember that. So that is an overview of the cranial nerves. Now go to my website, registernursrn.com, and take the quiz and see how well you grasp this material. And thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.